My name is Michael Carrick. I'm a 34-year-old psychologist at an asylum. I've been working here for about three years. It isn't what you would call a fun job, but it pays the bills. My job is to interview the people here, which are mostly mass criminals about why they would do what they did. Most of them are pretty cooperative. Only a few have tried to rip my head off. Their stories don't freak me out as much as you'd think they would. Usually they just stare at whatever weapon they choose for like an hour and then at their victim for about half an hour or less. You know, classic horror movie cliches. I've heard those stories way too much and they don't freak me out like they used to. Although just the thought that these people aren't from movies do give me some chills. But I'm a professional, no need for all that weakness. Do I ever think I'll die to one of these guys? Well, of course. If they get a hold of me and the guards don't save me in time, I'm screwed. It takes a lot of trust in the security holding them down that you'll be alright. These are angry, insane people. They will stop at nothing to escape. Except for the few that actually enjoy it here, or are too insane to comprehend where or what they even are. I went home one night and was a bit uneasy. I had dealt with a lot more inmates than I usually do, and they seemed really messed up. I just had to keep telling myself that they were locked up good, and I was alone. But your mind doesn't care about how much you try to convince it. It's still going to give you that feeling that someone is around the corner with a sharpened toothbrush someone carved with the edge of their cell. I lived alone, so that didn't really help much. My unorganized and incoherent house only provided a small amount of security. I did what any average 21st century human does after dealing with insane murderers. I made dinner, watched a few Family Guy episodes, talked with some of my friends, and went to bed. All the while jumpy because of the inmates, but I managed. The next day was about the same, except there was this one guy who I've been working with for a few months. He was the type of guy I was certain would escape one day, but he hasn't yet. He was walked in, and I was pretty shocked to see he managed to actually kill another inmate. He was covered in blood and was strapped in the best way our security was able to. I started to ask him a few questions, but all he cared about was killing people. He threatened me and the guards many times. He said that one of his favorite things to do with the bodies was to slather the blood all over them. I guess that was some sort of victory sign? Whatever it was, it creeped me out a bit. I can't really get onto him for doing that because his brain doesn't work like a normal human does. The best thing I could do was extract as much information as I could from him. I wouldn't be too surprised if I saw him in the electric chair in the next few days. We talked for about an hour and he was escorted out. He was pretty difficult to handle and often tried to get information out of me, turning the questions around or trying to change the subject as much as he could. It gave me the impression he was pretty intelligent and planned his attacks well. I haven't talked with someone like that before in the years I've been here, and it left a mild impression on me. The rest of the day I didn't feel like I was doing the best I could. I couldn't get the guy out of my head. After I dealt with everyone for the rest of the day, I asked one of the guards about him. His response only made me fear him more. That one wasn't the only one he's killed. He's managed to kill other inmates from across the entire asylum, even other guards. Some of them were my friends. He never tries to escape, he just wants to kill for sport. I've been wanting to kill him for so long, asshole's taken too many lives. Fortunately, we're going to be taking his in a few days. I don't blame them. I went home that night and made sure every window and door was locked. I was relieved that all of them were, except one window. Nobody really tries to break in through the window, right? Besides, it's on the second story. They'd have to be pretty desperate. After I dealt with that, I went downstairs and almost reached my living room before I stopped. I felt completely calm and safe, standing right in the open. I looked around and just saw my house being itself, quiet and average. I then started listening to my own breathing, then to my clothes as I look around. These subtle sounds were oddly relaxing. Nothing was happening. Nothing. A few hours passed and a big wave of dread was building in me. I felt like everyone locked up had been studying me and knew how to find me. I noticed a low fog under me. I stumbled so hard I almost fell down. I couldn't feel the fog, but it reacted to however I moved. I waited for it to fade away for a bit, but it just stayed there. If anything, it got slightly higher. I picked up my phone and tried to call for someone to inspect whatever was causing this. I scrolled through my phone, but I couldn't even find the phone app. You know, the thing it was built for? Scrolling more, I realized that there weren't any apps that I could talk to other people with. Where'd they go? I just had to sit there and hope it went away. My dread feeling was getting worse. As my dread built up, I began to hear quiet whispers. 
At first, I couldn't understand them. They gradually got louder over time, and I kept hearing them say, At this point, I was just sitting on my couch, bent over with my hands on my head. The whispers were getting louder and louder. I remained in that position and just breathed harder. I looked up and almost fell out of my seat. What looked to be slightly undead versions of my friends were walking towards me down the foyer. They were holding knives and anything else you'd use as a weapon in a prison or an asylum. I was in disbelief at what I was seeing. They looked almost identical to them, but they weren't. There was no way these were my friends. They kept inching closer, threatening to kill me in the most brutal way that they can. The fog was getting deeper and I almost couldn't see my legs. I couldn't get my gun because they were blocking the way to get there. I ran to my kitchen instead. I was getting lightheaded and my vision was blurry. I wasn't sure if I could take them, but I had to do at least something. They kept limping my direction, and since they weren't too fast, I took the time to prepare myself to defend. I scanned all around them to figure out what was the best way of attacking. Finally, I charged in and threw as much force as I could onto them. Most dropped pretty easily, but a few put up a decent fight. I hesitated a lot of my attacks because they were all my friends. I knew they actually weren't, but my brain tried to hold me back. My eyes were flooded in tears. I still couldn't convince myself these weren't anyone I was close to. They were just copies. I managed to slice down everyone except one. He was my closest friend, and it hurt me a lot to kill him. What the hell am I saying? It hurt me a lot to kill any of them! This one hurt me the most, though. We would spend the most time together, and I really felt we would never split up. He was trying his hardest to overcome me, sometimes actually sticking the knife inside me pretty deep. I stared at him as he kept trying, and I could barely make out his face. The face of the guy from the asylum. That gave me just enough courage to kill him. I shoved his knife out of the way and rammed mine in his chest as hard as I could, dragging it down making sure he was dead. I took a second to gather my surroundings, trying to comprehend what just happened. The only thing that was left was the bodies and the weapons. My house had faded into a black void. Gradually over time, the bodies faded. I looked over to the friend I just killed as he was fading. I could swear I saw that inmate's face right before he was gone. All that was left was me, and that only lasted a few seconds. I could see my skin start to peel off in dry bits. Soon my veins were exposed, then my muscles, bones, until my whole arm was gone. It kept going until I was completely evaporated. I didn't feel a thing. I didn't even get worried I was going to feel pain. I just sat there and accepted my death. After what I had to do, I really didn't have the courage to try and resist. Right before I was gone, I laid my head back and accepted my fate. I didn't know how long it was, but my house reformed a bit before I did, and I formed back on my couch. Except, it wasn't my couch. The whole house was slightly different and more... organized. <laughs>